Hello folks, my name's Kevin and welcome to this session on performance management. Today I want to talk to you about some strategy in relation to delivering positive feedback to an individual, but also I want to talk a little bit about how to deliver some negative feedback. To start with, why would you consider developing your performance management skills? Well, simply it's the hallmark of an effective manager. You will, doing it well and effectively will gain the respect from your peers, your staff and the management team. You'll accelerate your career faster than you could imagine. It will also produce higher and greater outcomes and results for you and subsequently the business. So folks, what I want to talk about is the five key aspects in relation to delivering positive feedback. And the five are Number one is to be specific. The more specific you can be with your feedback, the more positive attribute it will have. For example, you have an individual that's written a report. You could provide feedback. That was a terrific report you did. However, think about it this way. Say, yes, the report you wrote was very good. I particularly liked how you wrote and couched your language around the findings and the detail you put in the recommendation. See how that zeroed in on something more specific in relation to the report? Another example would be, thanks, you did a great job today, well done. Be more specific. You did a terrific job on repairing that window today. So you're doing more specific. So think about your workplace, think about how you can deliver more specific feedback to the individual. Number two is to be timely. Where practical, the more immediate your feedback is after you see the behaviour, the more profound an effect it will have. And, the, and subsequently being specific and timely, when the individual or the team hear this positive feedback, they are more likely to repeat positive behaviour and thus producing better results for you and the business. Number three is praise and providing people with praise can be also another powerful technique in terms of reinforcing the positive behaviour. Now praise can be delivered in several different ways. It can be praise one-on-one -on -one with, with the individual. It also can be in front of their peers or in front of a larger group of people. Uh, recognising that person for their for their positive performance is, can also be a, a profound way to do it. Also, something in writing might, you might want to consider sending the individual an email. And if you do send a, the individual an email with the with the positive work they did, think about who you should CC in that email. If the individual sees the email with the positive impact and notices that you've included the, the manager or significant others in the organisation in the message, this also can have a very powerful impact on the positive behaviour and thus more likely to repeat that behaviour. Also another method is to publish something on your website or in some sort of publication of your organisation. You might put plaques around the wall uh, indicating the employee of the week or whatever it be, but think about how praise can be delivered to either the individual or the team. And number four is to uh, have these positive attributes of performance management linked to a rec reward and recognition program. And this is probably suitable for another topic, the, the topic it's a large area. So if you can link their specific behaviours to the reward and recognition program, again this can reinforce the positive behaviour and, and thus repeat that behaviour. Something to consider when looking at the reward and recognition program and, and generally giving feedback, whether that positive or negative, think about the, the organisation's KPIs, the department's KPIs, or the individual's KPIs. When I say KPIs, key performance indicators, sometimes also known as key result areas. So bear in mind that these are far more effective if they're tied into some sort of reward and recognition program linked to key performance indicators. And number five, folks, in the, the positive aspects of delivering positive income, 
positive income, but also positive output. The suggest to document any discussion you have with your team or your individual in relation to providing some positive feedback. By documenting it, you will be able to manage your communication much better with the employee. If every time you meet your employee, the employee, your um, you say the same positive thing, yes, this can have a positive impact, but the employee might think, well, this is just a waste of time. They're just repeating the same same thing over and over again. So be very conscious of not to over communicate the positive, but to be specific and timely with with that. So folks, I want to move on and talk talk a little bit about the negative feedback. And this is something that's challenging for most of us, particularly in management, when we have to deliver something that is negative. And as we start this topic, I'd suggest instead of let's calling this negative feedback, let's call it something areas of development or developmental feedback. Treat it as a working progress as, as opposed to just delivering bad news to the individual. So I want to share seven key aspects in relation to delivering negative feedback. And similar to the positive, it's number one, be specific. The more specific you can be with the feedback, the more impact or well, the more positive impact in addressing the negative uh, feedback will be. Uh, number two, again, be timely. The more immediate you can be after the behaviour that you want to change, the, the more likelihood you'll have in achieving that and the individual will feel better about that. The number three is look for the positive in some of their behaviour. For example, the individual might be a very productive individual, uh, manage their time very effectively when they're at work. However, this particular in individual has a habit of arriving to work late, five minutes, ten minutes late, and it's critical for the business that people are there on time to uh, handle customers' calls or whatever the nature of your business be. So, in looking for something positive in this performance management issue, you would complement and recognise the individual's productivity when they're at work and their positive attitude. And then you would talk about, we need to address this issue of timeliness, tardiness in, in relation to being at work on time, and endeavour to work through the issue with the individual, whether it's, uh, I can't get out of bed in time, or whatever the, whatever the situation is or the excuse they're offering, that gives you an opportunity to work on that, um, on that issue. To, to address it, to improve. And in saying that, we would then move on to uh, gaining some sort of plan around that. And what is often used in business is a developmental plan that is within the employee's file, that you can make notes with the employee and, and with discussions you can work out a, a developmental plan in relation to moving towards improving the negative behaviour or working on the areas of, of development. And subsequently with this plan you work with, with the individual, you would number five, gain, gain agreement on the, on the content of the plan, get some buy-in from the individual. Also with the development plan would be tied into to a review date where you would agree with the individual, we'll catch up next week to see how you're tracking with arriving to work in a, in a timely manner. Or if it's a week or two weeks or a day, whatever it be. Number seven is like the positive document, document, document. Ensure that you write down any discussion you have with any of the workplace issues that you're, you're working with the individual. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about a couple of issues here. In relation to the developmental or the negative feedback, developmental feedback is <clears throat> with, with being timely, if you see something in your workplace that could be in breach of workplace health and safety, it needs to be addressed immediately. If you see something in the workplace that could be deemed as harassment and bullying, 
it needs to be dealt with immediately. If it's something that the individual is doing in relation to potential breach of security or confidentiality, it needs to be addressed immediately. So all very well waiting for the end of the day with some of the other feedback or the next meeting, but when it comes to those three areas, I'd suggest jump on that straight away. Also, I want to talk a little bit more about the, uh, the feedback. If you have an individual that is, that is problematic and is, is making life difficult for you and, and the colleagues, team members, I would suggest <clears throat> setting up a private meeting with this individual where the two of you can get together and have a private discussion to see if you can uncover some of the issues that are going on in this employee's uh, either work situation or possibly personal or home home life situation. And I mean, as, as we all do, we've got changes in our lives and issues in our lives, so there could be a significant change in terms of um, the income. Their partner may have lost a job recently or they may have to care for a, a elderly person or they might have an addiction issue. There could be a whole range of issues going on in this individual's life that's affecting their performance. And in having these discussions, I would suggest if you don't feel competent or confident with these discussions, if your organisation is big enough, draw from the human resources or employee relations area to help you through this. If you don't have that resource, then I'd suggest gain an external consultant, an expert in employee relations, to work through this issue with you and the employee to see if you can get that employee back on track. And again, document, document, write down any 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 um, discussions that you have with your employee. And without uh, sounding too obvious, please, these, these documents, these development plans and any of these sensitive discussions need to be treated with uh, confidentiality. So files needed to be ensured to be stored away in a secure, place and, and so forth. So folks, my name's Kevin Egan. Thanks so much for having a look at the video. Click like if you like and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers.